Okay, okay. There was this one time. I'll tell you guys a secret, okay? When I was really young, in another life, a young Vanta Crow was taking a test. And the others that were taking the test next to me, we were all told to put folders around us to block anybody from cheating, to prevent cheating. And there was one time when the person next to me had knocked their folders down and my folder down. And then I looked to the left and I saw one of their answers and I accidentally cheated. I'll still never forget that. That was the one time I ever cheated and I never did it again. Only one answer weak. <laughs> it is a core memory for me. I still remember it. I remember how old I was and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I gotta make an apology video. What? Well, really? Was it the correct answer? I don't remember. <laughs> it was a while ago. It was a bit ago. It was quite some time ago. I feel really bad about it still. My truth. I cheated on one question. I mean, it's real. I still remember it. I still remember it. I still remember it. It's been a long time too, and I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten that. This was in another life. This was in another life. I have memories of a past uh, that that is uh, that is not mine, but the person might be related to me. <laughs> I love the. I cheated a lot too. Don't worry, <laughs> you're not alone. Did I tell anyone? I mean, I'm telling you guys now. This is my first time uh, opening up about it. I didn't know what to do because it was like one question, and I just felt so bad. You know, I didn't really know what to do. Yeah, that's cool. That's a good way to think about it, honestly. Do you think Niji's gonna fire me because of that Because of that one time? Hopefully they don't. I hope they don't think I'm a bad person because of it. So you actually took his answer? Well, it was the right answer, I'm pretty sure. I think so. No snitches. Would you rather cheat off of Zally or Wilson on a test? I don't know. I have no idea. I really don't know. I feel like those are different environments, you know? Like, I know we can kind of surmise how Zally and Wilson would be. I know that we can kind of surmise how they would be based on how they act in certain situations. Like, you know, Wilson's the type to do his work, like, super duper early. Zally seems really conscientious as well. But, like, I don't know. How people are in, like, a uh, more standardized environment, I think, is very different. It's just because people are one way in the real world, and they're one way in how they conduct and carry themselves with their own personal business, it doesn't mean that they, they would do well in a standardized situation. Now, there is a correlation between that. Like, if you're a structured person that knows, you know, how to how to be on time and how to be prompt, then you're probably going to do well in a standardized uh, scenario, but that may not always be the case. So, it's really hard for me to say, honestly. Like, I think most people might assume that I wouldn't do well in a standardized environment because it's just like, oh, you know, Vanta's this, Vanta's that. And, you know, I, I wouldn't fault you for making that kind of an assumption. But I feel like I actually wouldn't do do that badly in a standardized environment. Honestly, I feel like when I have a structure or like a course to follow, I actually do a lot better. It's the reason why Pimsler is working so, so, uh, working out so well for me in terms of like setting for Japanese, because it's a structured preset path. All that all I have to do is literally follow and it's so easy. So I can be prompt and it's really simple and easy to do. But you know, that's just how my brain works. I don't think standardized, uh, environments work well for everyone. Some people don't, don't need to follow a plan. Some people need to be free spirits. What was my best subject? Ooh, that's an interesting question to answer. Very, very, very interesting question. I don't know what my best subject was. I guess if I had to pick one, science. Was I a good kid or a troublemaker of a mo? <laughs> I'm just too lazy to be a troublemaker. I also wasn't interested in a lot of things that would get me into trouble. So I was lucky. Which science? Chemistry. I liked chemistry a lot. Chemistry was a weird, was a weird thing though, cause I still don't know how it fucking happened. Have you ever gotten a perfect score in a course before? Yeah, like basically you, you get like, you get like literally all 100s on every single thing in the class, in the course. It's like that. Yeah. When I was taking courses at Ash, science was like, like chemistry specifically. Yeah, I got full marks. It was pretty crazy. Somehow every single test, every single assignment, I got 100% on literally everything. I left that class with fucking 100%. No, don't call me smart. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not smart. I only did that once. I never did it again. I am indeed not smart. I feel like things like science, just like history and other stuff, history, English, science, it's mostly just memory. I think math is the only thing that's not just memory. And even math is just memory. You know, it's just about remembering formulas and learning how to, how to apply the, the formulas to the different variables that the questions give you. Most subjects are, are just memory. You just have to remember stuff. So by that logic, I would say history is probably the easiest subject you could ever take. Then science, then something like a language, and then math. This is on like an, a more objective scale. Obviously, different subjects are gonna come easier to you depending on a lot of things.
Usually interest is a big one. If you're not interested in the subject, you're probably not gonna do well in it. Unless you're just a god or something. IDK. Not if you have terrible memory. Well, I mean, there are ways to combat terrible memory. Flashcards, study guides, reading, all kinds of things. Exercises you can do every day. Spending like 15 minutes a day looking over flashcards can really boost your memory. I don't actually know what, what factors influence memory or a lack thereof. It's very interesting to think about. Like, there's all these apps on the App Store that tell you that, like, the Elevate app or, like, all these other things, you do them, like, for 10 minutes a day, you know, it can help boost brain activity and even prevent things like Alzheimer's and dementia. And it's just like, I wonder how that works. I guess it's, like, working out just like anything else. You do activities that stimulate your brain every single day, then your brain's just gonna be stronger. But, like, does that affect memory? Or does it affect other things? Who knows, dude? Because I feel like I have a pretty good memory, but I also feel like I have a pretty shitty memory. It's kind of funny. Hmm. <laughs> It's very strange. Taking long walks improves memory, does it? Hmm, interesting. Short answer is we don't have enough. We don't know enough about the brain to have a clear answer. Very true. It's so interesting, like, in how much of a role the brain plays in literally everything, dude. Like, you can work out so much and eat healthy, but, like, it's insane how much your mental health is connected to your, um, uh... It's like, if your mental health isn't up there, then, like, working out's actually gonna be trash. Because they're both intrinsically linked. That's why working out, for some reason, makes you feel better. Well, it can, at the very least. It's definitely not a cure-all. But, yeah, it's kind of wild. Some people will eat healthy and not see the same results, because sometimes it's not just the numbers game. It's also, um... It's also a chemistry game. Different chemical reactions that occur. Maybe you're just like stressed the hell out all the time. So your body just produces a bunch of cortisol. It's gonna make it harder to lose weight. It's kind of unfortunate. The human body's kind of stupid sometimes. I wish it wasn't.